at once. There is a latency involved, which works as a system to move the blood appropriately. All these signals are non-stationary, or called transient. So what happens to a non-stationary signal when we process it to view it in the frequency domain? It starts to become distorted, added noise where it shouldn't be. This is because of the underlying assumption of the Fourier transform. It is, it models the periodic nature of the signal. And by looking at the time domain of the signal, there is nothing periodic of a non-stationary signal. This was one of the major problems with digital signal processing. Not only does the signal become distorted, but you cannot conceptualize an idea when this frequency occurs. So what did engineers, scientists, and mathematicians do? They made an assumption using the Fourier transform that if they window or cut the signal to a place in time, the signal can become stationary. Then we can once again use the Fourier transform because the signal is then forced to become periodic once more. This usage of windowing with the Fourier is called the short time Fourier transform. The problem with this is that you really need to understand the content of the signal to make appropriate windowing for it to become stationary. This is hardly ever the case and many times these assumptions lead to problems. There is research available just on how to window signals to receive the most accurate data analysis for specific events. This became an important concept because of the limitations that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle imposed on data analysis. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle deals with the concept of time frequency resolution. The principle states that with high time resolution you will receive a poor frequency resolution and with high frequency resolution you will receive a low time resolution. So when using a short time Fourier transform, once the window size has been chosen, the time frequency resolution is fixed. Thus, a window could be analyzed with good time resolution or frequency resolution, but not both. Therefore, you have an underlying trade-off between the time and frequency. If a longer window is used, a compromise on the assumption of stationarity within the window prevails. So how can we process these transient signals? To overcome this limitation, one must change the window size at several different values, thus achieving a multi-resolution analysis. The Heisenberg principle is still satisfied, but the time resolution enhances at high frequencies, while the frequency resolution enhances at low frequencies. The logical reasoning of this concept is what the wavelet transform provides a time frequency multi-resolution analysis. The first step in the protocol for a wavelet transform is to determine a mother wavelet. There are many types of mother wavelets and each mother wavelet has its own application because of its innate characteristics from its topology. Once a mother wavelet is decided, it is translated through the signal using convolution. The windowing technique is used by changing the scale of the wavelet basically the dilation and compression of the wavelet when translated. The idea behind dilation and compression is that if the wavelet is compressed, it represents high frequencies. Remember a high rate of change? And if it is dilated, it has a slow rate of change, hence a low frequency. As the wavelet is translated and dilated multiple times through the signal, the wavelet quantifies how well it correlates to the topology of the signal. This correlation of the signal receives a value of how well it matches the signal. If there is a high correlation, the transform reports a high value at the particular scale and position in time. If there is no correlation, you receive a low index value. Eventually, after receiving all these index values of correlation in terms of time and scale, it allows you to build a three-dimensional image. But in most cases, we will see data expressed in two dimensions, with a third dimension expressed in contours using a color scheme, where colors represent the amplitude. So, if wavelets give you all this information, why don't we use wavelets as a standard now? The wavelet transform is a recently new mathematics which became popular in the math community in 1989 from Ingrid Dubachis. Because the wavelets is a contemporary way for DSP, 
The senior division of the scientific community lacked the understanding of the transform, which has created a controversial question of how effective is the transform. Although the debate is out, there is no debating the numbers on sparking interest with initially only a few publications in 1990, and now into the hundreds, wavelets are gaining popularity and fast. In 1992, the FBI chose a wavelet method developed by Tom Hopper of the FBI Criminal Justice Information Service Division to compress its enormous database of fingerprints. In 1995, the Pixar Studios released the movie Toy Story, the first fully computer-animated cartoon. In the sequel, Toy Story 2, some shapes were rendered by subdivision surfaces, a technique mathematically related to wavelets. In 1999, the International Standards Organization approved a new standard for digital picture compression, called JPEG 2000. The new standard uses wavelet compression image files by a 1 to 200 ratio with no visible loss in image quality. Web browsers are expected to support the new standard by 2001. Past, the superiority of this transform versus the FOIA transform should be easily evident. One, performing localized analysis. Two, revealing trends, breakdown points, discontinuities, and higher derivatives. And three, compressing and denoising a signal without depreciable degradation in the signal to noise ratio, ultimately allowing you to maintain approximately the same amount of energy in the signal. This ability to use topology and conforming to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle allows researchers to create a time, frequency, multi-dimensional analysis for digital signal processing. This is what will take us into the future, allowing us to continue to advance and evolve as a society. Although wavelets are quite contemporary in the community, they are secretly making an integral part of our life. Many people don't use the transform and say that they can get the same results with the short time for your transform. But remember, the perspective of how we observe and analyze what we see ultimately determines our view and understanding of an event. When our view is distorted or our point of reference is manipulated, the information we receive to make an accurate analysis of the observation could lead to a falsified perception and understanding. Thank you.